Hi, Charles Sizemore here. Today, we're returning for another dividend stock of the week, and I'm going to choose one that was a few years ago anyway, very popular among dividend investors. It has, uh, of course, fallen out of favor in recent years because there's been a general bear market in all things related to energy. But uh, the stock I'm speaking of is, of course, Kinder Morgan. Kinder Morgan, um, in a previous life, was the first uh, large, widely held master limited partnership. Uh, the stock is no longer a master limited partnership. It simplified its structure a few years ago and is now a corporation. If you are uh, an experienced income investor and you've, you've invested in, in MLPs in the past, you've invested in dividend stocks, you've had sort of a little of everything, you know why this is a big deal. When you have a normal dividend stock, uh, you don't really have any special tax reporting. All of your dividend, um, all of your dividend income just shows up on the 1099 you get at the end of the year from your broker. Whereas if you do buy things like MLPs, you get a separate tax statement for every single MLP, and they're not particularly user friendly. Um, they're not that bad. I've dealt with them in the past myself, but they're certainly more complex to deal with than a standard 1099. So the fact that uh, Kinder Morgan transitioned from an MLP to a, to a, to a C corporation several years ago uh, makes this a, very, a much more attractive stock than some of its peers in the high yield uh, pipeline space. So let me uh, back up for a second. Um, what does the company actually do? As I alluded uh, just a second ago, uh, it is a, a pipeline company. They transport um, various things, but first and foremost, it's natural gas. They also do a little bit of uh, petroleum, gasoline, et cetera. But um, the, the vast majority of what they do is natural gas. The company owns over 80,000 miles of pipeline assets, just you know, crisscrossing North America, and um, approximately 40% of all gas consumed in the United States flows through a Kinder Morgan pipeline. So that gives you any indication this is an extraordinarily large company uh, with a very, very large footprint in this space. If you are looking for a large, diversified, blue chip uh, natural gas pipeline company, uh, there are, are very, very few that would rate um, higher than Kinder Morgan in my book. It is, um, it, it is one, of, one of the blue chips. Now, um, this company has gone through a transition. This was a, as I said before, this was a very popular stock several years ago. What happened is, starting in 2014, we really started to get a glut in the energy market. And while pipeline stocks traditionally had relatively little correlation to energy prices, energy prices fell so hard and so fast starting at the end of 2014 that even minimal exposure to energy prices was enough to cause really big problems um, in, the, in the energy um, infrastructure space. And so even um, you know, fee-based companies like Kinder Morgan got into trouble. What happened was, they had uh, sort of backed up the truck and really loaded themselves up with debt in order to buy pipeline assets. That made all the sense in the world when Wall Street and uh, uh, bondholders in general were just willing to shower money on these companies at very um, advantageous uh, rates. That changed when energy prices started to fall about five or six years ago. All of a sudden, Wall Street started to be a bit more concerned, was a little bit less eager to lend. Well, that's a problem when you're essentially addicted to debt. And so what happened in this entire space was that uh, you saw, um, for basically lack of other alternative, they had to reduce their dividends, had to reduce their distributions, and use that to you know, shore up their balance sheet, pay off debt, become more like you know, normal companies. And what happened was a lot of the individual investors that were invested in Kinder Morgan fled. They, they you know, the, when, when the dividend got cut and the share price dropped, the, the share price um, back in 2015 was $45 a share. That's where it topped out. Um, today, it, it trades at roughly a third of that. And what happened was when, um, when the company was forced to cut its uh, dividend several years ago, a lot of the individual mom and pop investors that held the stock, they just dumped it and moved on. 
and, and they haven't really returned yet. That's created so, uh, what I would call sort of an orphan stock. Uh, this stock has been stuck in a trading range of about 15 bucks to 20 bucks a share for the last several years. And again, it's because there's no natural clientele. The stock is not widely, it's, I can't say it's not widely held by institutions, but it's, it's not necessarily popular with institutions because a lot of institutional investors are uh, divesting of oil and gas. So that really left, you know, kind of mom and pop. Well, the mom and pop investors, after they, they touched that hot stove several years ago, they've just been very reluctant to go back. Well, that's that's good. Yeah, I, I like to think of myself as a contrarian value guy. And when you see a, a segment of the market that's widely unpopular and doesn't have sort of a natural buying clientele, that's where you start looking for bargains. And it doesn't mean that a bargain is going to present itself that day. You have to look for signs that the stock has bottomed out and perhaps started a new uptrend. And that's really what we see in Kinder Morgan today. So Kinder Morgan was already getting its head bashed in long before the COVID pandemic. But then the COVID pandemic happened and it's like someone opened a trap door and the stock price just fell through it. Uh, that was true of the entire energy space and, and Kinder, uh, Kinder Morgan was, was not spared from that. So um, what, what happened? Prices collapsed last year. They've been clawing their way back slightly, but they're still pretty far below their, their pre-pandemic levels. And they are dramatically below their um, uh, sort of pre-oil glut levels. They call it the, the mid-2010s you know, um, levels. So uh, we have an, an opportunity to buy a stock that has been left for dead. Its kind of core clientele has dumped it and moved on. It's just an orphan stock, which is great. That means there's really nobody left to sell. Now, that does sound a little bit simplistic, but it really is true. When a stock is widely owned, or you could even say over-owned, when it's extremely popular, what happens is um, there's nobody left to buy it. When a stock has become so out of favor that it's already been divested of by, by Wall Street, by even individual investors, there's really nobody left to sell at that point. And that's when a really you know, good sustainable uptrend can begin. Now, the stock, uh, the stock yields a little bit over 6% today, which is great. I think it's highly likely we see some dividend growth over the next couple of years as well. The pipeline space is... Um, how should I put this? It's become a bit of a pariah sector, but that's okay. Um, as, as tobacco stocks have shown over the years, companies that are in kind of politically incorrect sectors can really do well precisely because they're politically incorrect, because um, they're essentially priced as left for dead value stocks that creates good buying opportunities. So you can think of Kinder Morgan and its peers today it's sort of like the tobacco stocks of 20 years ago. Uh, if you bought tobacco stocks 20 years ago, you got in at a fantastic yield. You just held on to it this whole time. You've collected fantastic dividends and decent capital gains along the way and a rising dividend stream as well. That's what I really um, expect to see in Kinder Morgan. You're getting a, a really nice uh, six plus percent um, yield. You are getting a, a very, very good chance of decent capital gains for this stock to just go back to its, you know, go back to its former highs. It would triple from here. Um, it could triple from here. If it tripled from here, I, I would consider it a little bit expensive, but it could double from current prices, and I, I believe still be quite cheap. So that's uh, that's a very good place to be. Uh, as for dividend growth expectations, um, that is somewhat in flux, but I do think 5-7% annual increase in the dividend uh, over the next, call it five years, is well within reason to expect. At the very least, we should expect the dividend to outpace inflation. So, um, you know, what we do in, in uh, Green Zone Fortunes and, and more broadly in, in money and markets is we do like to run all the stocks that we recommend through a, uh, a rating system. Now, I'm, I'll be the first to tell you, Kinder Morgan does not rate well based on our, on our rating system. And, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, um, energy stocks in general have just been destroyed over the last five years. It is what it is. There's no momentum in this space. Uh, that's you know, they're, they're pretty much the entire 
sector, anything tangentially related to energy is going to rate low based on momentum. And in fact, Kendall Morgan's momentum score is, uh, wait for it, it's two. <laughs> it's two out of 100. This is a stock that has essentially no momentum, but that is that is okay. Momentum is a, uh, it's it's based on, let's, I can't say it's a lagging indicator, it's the wrong word, but when, when you talk about stocks momentum, that does look at its recent past. In this case, we are looking into the future. I think Kinder Morgan bottomed last year. Um, that momentum, and, and it has bounced sharply off that bottom. You're not really going to see its momentum score though increase for months, if not even a year or two. By the time the, mom the momentum score repairs itself after the last several years of damage, this stock could have already doubled. So I think it is important to kind of view some of these metrics um, in context. Now, growth, interestingly enough, Kinder Morgan does rate fairly well based on our growth metric. It rates a 61. Now, what does that tell you? The stock has been destroyed over the last five years, but the underlying business really hasn't. Now, the company has gone through some transformations. It's um, deleveraged itself. It's become a more conservative company, which of course is good if you're a dividend investor. But it, at no point did the company's operations shrink. They've been moving along at a really nice clip. So a growth rating of 61, that's that's solid. You know, we'll take that. The company also rates uh, well, eh, fairly well based on value, rates a uh, 59. It's, at least it puts it in the top half. Now, I do believe the value metric here is understated a bit. And the reason is value has to be relative. It's cheap relative to what? Well, it's the what that is uh, somewhat depressed with Kinder Morgan. Uh, pipeline companies in general tend to have very low reported earnings because they have very high depreciation charges. Those high depreciation charges are, are non-cash and they don't have to actually pay for them, but they still depress earnings. So, uh, you know, REITs have the same issue. Um, a lot of uh, kind of hard asset plays have the same issue. Um, it, it is what it is. It's just always going to perpetually make these companies look a little bit less cheap than they would because of that uh, denominator effect. You know, earnings are always going to be a little bit depressed. That's okay. If we know that, we can sort of handicap that and go around it. Now, moving on, the company doesn't rate super high based on quality for, for similar reasons. It rates about 39 based on quality. Um, again, it, it is what it is. Pipelines in general tend to be fairly highly leveraged. Now, Kendra Morgan has deleveraged significantly in recent years, but it still has a lot of debt, as $35 billion in debt. That's completely reasonable when you consider the nature of their assets. Their, nature, their assets are um, you know, cash flow producing pipelines with long lives. You should leverage an asset like that, of course, within reason. That does penalize it, though, based on our uh, quality score. Uh, furthermore, uh, reported earnings, as I described, tend to be depressed due to high depreciation charges. That lowers profit margins, so that tends to punish it um, on our quality score based on on its uh, lack of profitability, based on you know standard accounting as well. Moving on, um, volatility it rates pretty low here. Um, a low score here means high volatility. Now this is a relatively recent phenomenon. The volatility in the stock really exploded about five, six years ago, and it's been less ever since. But that explosion of volatility that, that really wrecked the stock during the energy bust in 2015, that's affecting the volatility score today. So um, it is what it is, as that incident sort of gets further and further in the past, you will see the volatility score on this stock improve. Um, again, by the time it does, you know, this, this is a backward looking metric. So by the time it does, we will likely have already seen um, a pretty good bounce. And then um, finally, size. This is a large company. Um, our model does tend to prefer smaller stocks because um, historically small, small cap stocks have outperformed large cap stocks. Uh, we're not going to get much of a bounce here. Um, the, the company rates a three based on size. But again, that's okay. Um, large cap stocks can do quite well, as we've seen in recent years. So overall, our the, the, uh, the green zone rating on this stock is not great. It's about a 14. But I, th I still think as our dividend stock of the week here, 
it does make sense to roll the dice on Kinder Morgan. I think we've seen the low point. I think from here, all of the ratings, uh, all of the, uh, the the six factors in, in, the, in the rating scale, I think they're all going to show improvement. And I think it's going to be pretty dramatic. Um, you look under the hood of the stock, it's healthy. It's at the end of the day, it's a pipeline company. It moves natural gas from point A to point B. Now, a lot of the uh, focus of the new administration is on clean, green energy. That's fine. I hope the future is cleaner and greener. It'd be fantastic if it were. The fact is natural gas is still the dominant energy uh, used in the United States. It, it drives our economy and that's not changing anytime soon. Over the next you know, 10, 20 years, you're going to see growth in natural gas usage. Now, if solar and wind energy really do um, accelerate in, in adoption, great. That's a fantastic place to be. Um, it doesn't mean that natural gas consumption um, starts to decline tomorrow. That's something that will happen likely multiple decades from now. So, you know, there you have it. In, in Kinder Morgan, we have a stock that's been battered and left for dead. Um, it's, it's a stock with no, uh, with not a lot of natural buyers right now. And it yields a really nice 6.4%. That's really where we want to be. We're getting a good yield today good possibility of growth in the future, great possibility for capital gains. And we're getting all of it in a stock that's been essentially left for dead. So that's our pick for the week. Until next time.